All right, so we have 49 years of video game consoles in 10 minutes. Since the, video. the first home console was released all the way back in the groovy days of 1972, 80? there oh, have been 72? over 30 wow. consoles created and sold in North America. That is an astonishingly high number. At this time, Nintendo was still years away from making their first console in Japan. Sony was still 20 years away from the launch of the original PlayStation, yep. and Microsoft was 30 years away from the launch of the original Xbox. Yes, sir. As you can see, times were much different back then. Remember Sega? Yeah, gaming Sega. has been a long way through the years. So I'm going to run through every single console generation by generation. Okay. It Let's all go. began with the first generation of video game Atari? consoles, and North American gamers only really had one option at the time the Magnavox Odyssey, which was released in 1972. The Odyssey had a really cool name and used a type of removable printed circuit board card, similar to a typical game cartridge to play game. The console has that 1970s aesthetic and just fit right in back then. The games weren't too complicated on the Odyssey either. They consisted of three Boy, I would destroy in anybody line. in this game. You even had to put a plastic overlay on your screen sometimes to add additional visual elements to the games. Yeah, it was the first console ever, so I'm going to cut it some slack. Magnavox yeah, I am too. To I can't lie. improved versions of the Odyssey until 1977 and etched their name into video game history forever. The second generation of video game consoles began in 1976 with the Fairchild Channel F. The F supposedly stood for fun, but I think it actually stood for flop. It wasn't the best console for hardcore gamers, but their He's education games ish. for children were solid. 1977 saw the release of the famous Atari 2600, <laughs> the console that is widely regarded as the king of the second generation. Its revolutionary yeah, I know what Atari is. controller changed the game forever. Until 1977, you only saw joysticks. Well, look how they control the arcade, They move in their body. The Atari 2600 put what one was in he just home. doing? Along with Pac-Man, Space Invaders Pac -Man. made the most well-known game on the console and helped drive sales up. In 1978, we got the Bally Astrocade, which flopped. A year later, in 1979, <laughs> we got the Magnavox Odyssey 2, an all-new console building he upon keeps the first something ever flopped. created, and this it man's was a menace. pretty good. Lastly, and I like in 1980, it. we got the Intellivision. It was Mattel's first video game console ever, and actually gave the Atari 2600 a run for its money. Third the generation. third generation of video game consoles, Nintendo. also known as the 8-bit era, kicked off in 1985 with, you guessed it, the Nintendo Entertainment System. It yes, was Nintendo's sir. first foray into the North American video game market after the crash of 1983. And oh boy, was it a smashing success. Oh boy. Now, IPs <laughs> like Super Mario and The Legend of Zelda were instant hits, and the games were unlike anything ever seen at the Look time. Look at that TV. You know that thing weighed like a way thousand pounds. Than those from the second generation. The NES truly changed the game. Just a year later, in 1986, the Sega Master System and the Atari 7800 both hit store shelves to compete with the NES, but they came up short. The Master System had a much smaller library than the NES, and its games simply weren't as good. The Atari 7800 was a big improvement over the 2600, Bro, but this still had its crazy. fair share of problems. Boy, what was that? NBA 2K19? 88? The fourth generation <laughs> like, of video game consoles, better known as the 16-bit era, began in 1989 with the release of the TurboGrafx-16 <laughs> and the Sega Genesis. The TurboGrafx-16 was technically not a 16-bit console, I as never it used a this. modified 8-bit CPU, which led to poor sales. The Sega Genesis holds a special place in my heart as it was the first home console I ever played. For starters, oh, snap. Okay. it was actually a 16-bit system. Well, it, it, it flopped, buddy. I'm playing on. Let me stop. Absolutely slapped. It was such a good console with a great library of games, but still couldn't compete with the Super Bro, Nintendo Bro, I love how they all move in their body with the controller. Released in 1991, the SNES I used to do was the king of the fourth generation. I don't even know where to start with the SNES. The NES was <laughs> so successful that Nintendo just knew the SNES would dominate sales. It its did. graphics were great. It Super had Nintendo games, hit different, those bro. Those controllers were top notch. In fact, the SNES was so good, it was still popular well into the fifth generation. Oh, we also yeah. got the Neo Geo in 1991. She's going a crazy too. Arcade experience to your home, but it was so expensive that it was seen as a luxury console more than anything else. Ah. Uh. Fifth there were plenty of consoles released in the fifth generation. The Dreamcast? Only two of them had success in North America. 1993 saw the release of the 3DO and the Atari Jaguar. The 3DO had a highly promoted launch, but ended up a victim of market saturation. Uh, it was difficult to develop games for the Atari Jaguar, which led to poor sales due to a lack of third-party support. 1995 saw the release of the Sega Saturn, which failed to live up to the expectations. I never had a Sega Saturn before. Never. Genesis. 
That one, get it today. because it launched in May, a very odd time of the year, and because the console didn't release a single Sonic the Hedgehog title. After a dispute over a disc-based add-on for the SNES, Nintendo and Sony both parted ways and decided Mega to do Man. things on their own. Sony would go on to release the PlayStation in 1995, and Nintendo released the N64 a yes, year later sir. in 1996. This was the most intense console war we had ever seen bro, at the time. It, tough, Discs bro. versus cartridges. Traditional controllers versus funky controllers. Fights over third-party developers. Diddy Kong Racing! The PlayStation oh my God, was the new kid on the racing. block and actually took it to Nintendo. Due oh, to their usage of discs, they were able to steal some of their third-party developers from Nintendo, none more famous than Square Enix. And they both the did PS1 good, though. The was the first console ever to sell over 100 million units and was a smashing yeah. success. Hey, the N64 PS1 was did also crazy. a very good console. Super Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, the N64 was loaded with great games. But at the end of the day, it couldn't compete with the PS1. Yeah, PS1, it was too, it was too advanced, bro. The sixth generation saw four consoles duke it out for Boy. supremacy. Game starting with 1999 Sega Dreamcast. No. The console truly ahead of its Dreamcast time. Dreamcast was good, right? The graphics on the console were Game insane Cube, for the time PS2. period, considering it came out near the end of the 64-bit era, and it had online capabilities. If Sega released it literally just a few years later, maybe Listen. things would have been different. But it was the last console they ever made. Listen. 2000 saw the release of the Sony PlayStation 2, which is still the best-selling console of it all is. time today. Amazing console. For starters, the console was backwards compatible with the PS1, so Tough. there was no reason to not upgrade if you had the cash. Tough. It also doubled as a DVD player back when those were all the rage. Boy, a DV Bro, DVD were great, players were the controllers expensive back were great, then, y'all. And the console had online capabilities. It was everything any gamer PS1, wanted at the time. GameCube, In 2001, and Xbox, two consoles right? were released. The Nintendo GameCube and the Microsoft Xbox. Told y'all. I told you. The GameCube you. was the first Nintendo Game home console my favorite to use console discs, ever. But they used mini discs and not typical CD-ROMs. The GameCube had arguably the best controller of all time. This was the start of the of, of the games, of the war. But it failed to compete with the PS2. Xbox Microsoft and uh, decided GameCube. To get into the video I'm sorry, game scene with the Xbox, Xbox and, uh, and it was very successful in North America, having a record-breaking launch and outselling the GameCube. Yeah. Halo Combat Evolved was such a great game. Halo that was were Xbox's Xbox like just to play it. Microsoft it, it was truly like a, a, made savior. online gaming go like mainstream. Rock? Uh -oh. The seventh it, generation of video games started in 2005 and Xbox 360? with the Microsoft Xbox 360. It was yeah. released a whole year before the PlayStation I love it, Xbox 360. and Wii giving Microsoft a head start on the competition. The console featured Xbox Live, a Xbox revolutionary 360 did online its, service bro, that oh helped you God. keep track of your friends and made playing online bro, Xbox a Xbox 360 did its thing, While bro. many believe the Xbox 360 was the king of the seventh generation, it was let down by technical issues, like the Red Ring of Death, time and time again. In 2006, I mean, all you needed was a towel, the PlayStation 3 okay. and Nintendo released the Wii. The PS3 the Wii, was bro, a direct the Wii competitor set it off, to the Xbox bro. 360. The Wii the set it off. both had an online service and the main difference being the PlayStation Network was free while Xbox Live it was a paid service. The PS3 also doubled as a Blu-ray player, which made yep. it more attractive than the Xbox 360 at the time. While the Xbox 360 and PS3 were all about power and graphics, the Wii was all about innovation. The Wii, the Wii didn't crazy. have gorgeous graphics or high-end specs. It was all about motion controls and having fun. They didn't get involved in any console wars, and it worked out well for them. The they Wii did. Both they did. they stayed to themselves. They're on their own island. I told y'all that. This day. They don't have to compete with nobody. The eighth PS4. generation of video game consoles kicked no, off what is in this? 2012 with the Wii U, oh, okay. well, which this may is have still, been Nintendo's biggest flop the Wii U, since the Virtual PS3. Boy. This console just <laughs> didn't have it. It had a horrible advertising campaign, not good. which led to poor sales right off the bat, In my and opinion. its gamepad was supposed to be revolutionary, but turned out to just be very limited. Its user interface and this was technically the first great. Nintendo and Switch, as usual, technically. Nintendo lagged behind Sony and Microsoft in regards to its online service. 2013 saw the release of two consoles, the yep. PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. Oh man, did Microsoft shoot themselves in the foot when launching Boy, Xbox, the Xbox One. <sighs> The console cost $100 more than the PS4 at Late, launch because man. it came with Kinect, which, oh yeah, was always on, watching your every move. It didn't go over well with the public, so many gamers switched Xbox, to the PS4. Xbox, they took a hit with Both this one, bro. consoles were great, but it's PS4 clear that the PS4 down. was the class of the generation. They shut until it Until the down. Nintendo Switch came out in 2017. It took Nintendo five years to learn from their mistakes, but they took everything Nintendo that was Nintendo was good about the at Wii releasing that 2017 because the there was Switch. no new console coming out at the time. It was the first hybrid console capable it was a really of being good played in handheld mode or in docked mode. It's revolutionary and one of the best consoles available right now. 
Yep, ninth Lastly, iteration. we have the current generation of video game consoles, the ninth yes, generation. In the span of three days, we saw two new consoles get released in 2020, with the Xbox Series X and S and the PlayStation yes, 5. PlayStation As you know, 5. the Xbox Series X is the most powerful console in the world, yeah. capable of playing games in 8K at 120 frames per second. Yeah. It has one of the most modern controllers out there with a gorgeous hybrid D-pad and is just chock full of next-gen features. I its little I brother of the, the Xbox the, Series uh, S isn't nearly as powerful Xbox. as the Series X, but it's still capable of playing games in 1440p at 120 frames per second. So it's intended for those who don't want to pay up for all the bells and whistles. We also got the PlayStation 5. PlayStation it has 5. similar specs oh to the Xbox goodness. Series X, but has a little less raw power. Instead, Sony focused mostly on the solid-state drive. The PS5's SSD is much faster than the Series X's, which cuts down on loading time substantially, improving the gameplay experience for everyone. It's also got a more futuristic design than the Series does, X, bro. if that's what that you're into, looks, oh as well as a controller chock full of unique features. It would be great if these consoles ever became available in stores, though. I feel like I've been waiting forever to buy one. I'm not gonna lie, I wish I started oh my gaming God. adventure all the way back in 1972. I wish I did not. Boy, they was playing on straight chalkboards. Other than that, comment down below what you guys... <laughs> comment down below what you guys think about the video. Shout out to the gamer for this video. It was very interesting. Um, yeah, man, one of the ninth generation. Uh, hopefully, guys, hopefully all of the old-time gamers that was that was playing on chalkboards back then, hopefully you guys are still, you know, gaming on now because... Uh, we're definitely uh we're we're definitely in better times. Let's just say that. Other than that, I'll see you guys later for the next one I'm out and